Kind thanks go to Brilliant for sponsoring today's episode. Today I'll explain to you why SpaceX pressurized Starship Serial No. 9 three times in one day without lighting the engines, what's different on SpaceX's second Super Heavy booster, and I'll show you first pictures of SpaceX's floating spaceports at Brownsville Harbor. What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates Sea launch platforms, new test tanks, Starship Serial No. 9 wet dress rehearsal, Starlink launch. A normal week in the life of Elon Musk and that's not even mentioning the milestones he and his workforce hit with his other companies. Do you recognize this? No, that's Boca Chica, Texas. To be precise, it's the spot where SpaceX started building their Starship construction site a little over two and a half years ago. Seen as always through the wonderful pictures of RGB aerial photography, the task of documenting history becomes much more real if you look at it like this. SpaceX's progress is nothing but amazing. This is the same place a few days ago, almost not recognizable. The ant's nest is growing. Thousands of workers all focused on one task, develop and build a next-generation super-heavy lift vehicle with the goal of making humankind a multi-planetary species. Sounds like the description of a sci-fi movie. It's real though, and it's still growing. More than half the space you see here is in development, even though the whole facility is massive by now. The scope of the project is hard to imagine. In two years from now, SpaceX will have a complete oxygen and methane refinery attached to the complex. Production tents will vanish and large assembly line buildings will appear. Hundreds of starships will be transported to Brownsville Harbor over time and shipped to their launch site in the Gulf of Mexico. The whole region of Brownsville will transform and become a space and tech hub. Startups will be founded in the wake of it. Welcome to Spaceport Boca Chica. Companies that will supply these starships with payload will want to be close by. If everything goes as planned, over time Boca Chica, Texas will transform into a second Cape Canaveral. A harbor for us to embark on a journey that leads us beyond Leo, beyond the Moon and maybe even beyond Mars. Boca Chica, Texas is the seedbed for a whole new branch of history with so many possible developments that predicting what exactly it will jumpstart is almost impossible. Let's just say that the possibilities are almost unlimited. That's the reason why I started talking about it, because I feel that this will be one of the biggest changes of human history in the 21st century as we start the journey of becoming truly multiplanetary. Thank you, Mary and Mauricio, for bringing us these pictures. The starship we're following right now is called Serial Number 9. SpaceX gives each test candidate a serial number to indicate what generation of hardware they are actively testing. Serial Number 8, for example, was the starship that did the 12.5 km flight. Serial Number 9 is undergoing the most rigorous tests to date. Pressure tests, triple static fire, more pressure tests and yesterday three aborted static fires. But were those really aborted static fires? If we look at Lab Padre's camera feed, who again had the best pictures of what was going on at the launch site, we can see an almost identical process three times. Fueling starts, frost builds up, a siren is heard, and everyone is getting ready for the anticipated static fire and nothing. Detanking, recycle, start again. We saw this three times. Every time the tanks were filled slightly differently, sometimes more, sometimes less fuel and oxidizer, as you can tell by the frost building up on the side. Every time though leading to what looked like aborts. All the way into the late evening. There of course is one other possibility for what SpaceX did here on Wednesday. To get familiar with the process you have to practice. If you want to practice how to start up a particular rocket, you do a so-called wet dress rehearsal. This means that everything is tested except for an ignition. All the steps are performed including fueling, which is why it's called a wet dress rehearsal. You test the prototype and train your ground personnel at the same time. This could very well be what we saw being done the whole day. Three wet dress rehearsals in a row, getting everyone up to speed. But SpaceX doesn't only do one thing at a time in Boca Chica. That's not how this will work. The task at hand is so large that things have to happen simultaneously if Elon still wants to be alive by the time we actually build our colony on Mars. 
While Starship serial number 9 is still waiting for that static fire, SpaceX is getting the next prototype down to the launch site in preparations for more testing. Test Tank Serial Number 7.2 SpaceX is testing a new thrust puck design and maybe even more importantly, they are testing a new steel down from 4 to 3 mm in thickness, trying to save weight in hull construction which in the end would get them closer to their aspirational goal of hitting 150 tons of payload to low Earth orbit for future starships. Tests might start after the Serial Number 9 flight, but it's good to see that there is no lack of test hardware. And as if that wasn't enough, SpaceX has also started construction on the second Super Heavy booster. So what's going on with Starship prototypes right now will continue with booster prototypes as well. This is B2's forward dome, so the dome all the way on top of the booster. It has some sort of hexagonal structure attached to it. Purpose unknown, but it might be the structure that Starships will rest on in the future. A fully fueled Starship weighs around 1320 metric tons and the forward dome is directly under it. To spread the weight even further, it could be that this dome plays a part in transferring it down into the booster's vehicle frame. Strap in, because we might see two Starship Super Heavy boosters being built side by side very soon. As of recording the episode, there is a single test date set for Boca Chica, Texas and the Starship program for today, Friday the 22nd. Temporary flight restrictions needed for Starship test activity are set until tomorrow, Saturday the 23rd. Today's weather looks good, a little cold, but that shouldn't keep SpaceX from testing if they want to. The weekend though has rain and strong winds heading for Boca Chica and that rain stays for a while too. The whole next week won't be perfect at all for a flight test. If at all, SpaceX might have to act quickly if they want to use the cloud-free moments. We'll have to wait and see together. What do you think? When will we see the first super heavy fly? As always, tell us in the comments. SpaceX's floating spaceports under construction. The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the team or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for members. Or do you know about the Y warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description. You rock! And on we go with SpaceX Starship news. It's just incredible that we can fill two episodes per week and there always are big milestones to talk about. SpaceX doesn't seem to run out of crazy ideas anytime soon. If you're a returning viewer of What About It, you already know the next milestone from September of last year. Musk announced back then that SpaceX would be building sea launch platforms for SpaceX and we speculated that the only feasible solution for this would be to use old oil rigs and modify them for the task. So we created an animation, analyzed the whole project and looked into what would be needed to accomplish the task. Now, there are two people in South Padre who quickly got themselves a nice spot in my heart last time I went to Boca Chica. Jean and Rachel from South Padre. And since their main business is a surf school, they of course have a boat. Here for example you can see Gene and his son filming the SpaceX ship Go Discovery back in 2020 when it arrived at Brownsville Harbor transporting parts from the old Coco site in Florida where SpaceX used to have a second construction site for Starships. Now Gene is always out there somewhere, whether on a horseback or in their boat, always exploring and always documenting SpaceX's progress. Here's what Gene and Rachel stumbled upon after getting a tip from Jack Bayer, who works for NASA Spaceflight and is a former editor for What About It. Let me introduce you to Deimos, SpaceX's brand new oil rig. One of two sea launch platforms, Deimos is not alone either. It has a sister rig called Phobos and those two names of course are the two moons circling Mars. And as a fun fact, Deimos and Phobos translated from ancient Greek means terror and fear. Those were the sons of the Greek war god Ares, or known as Mars amongst ancient Romans, spreading terror and fear in his wake. That's fun. Phobos right now is anchored in Galveston, Texas near Houston. It's unknown if SpaceX will transport it to Brownsville or refurbish it in Galveston. And they are ENSCO 8500 Ultra Deep Water Semi-Submersible Oil Rigs. That's a mouthful. Produced since 2008, they have been in business in the Gulf of Mexico. And Deimos has been at the Brownsville Harbor since May 2016, parked and ready for recycling and decommissioning. 
The irony couldn't be better. Utilize redundant fossil fuel technology to usher in a new age of space exploration. It's hard to imagine what the finished floating spaceport will look like. Here's a little size comparison of a starship on deck done for Y by Nick Henning and it shows how large the platform actually has to be to support such a large launch vehicle. We also tried showing you a size comparison with Super Heavy, but yeah, you see the problem. That will have to wait a bit longer. Here's another picture taken out of a plane by Jack Byer for NASA Spaceflight. And going in closer, it reveals how much work is still ahead for SpaceX. The original cost of such a rig is beyond $300 million, and SpaceX bought them as an undisclosed buyer in August 2020 for $3.5 million. That's quite the bargain. Deimos is an ENSCO 8500 and Phobos an ENSCO 8501. There's very little difference between the two models and SpaceX will have to remove or rebuild a lot of the deck structure anyway. After work has finished, SpaceX can either tow the rigs to their destination or lift them out of the water and carry them with a specialized transport ship. This picture is of an ENSCO 8505 being transported out to the Gulf of Mexico. So we can expect a very similar sight at some point in the future. When that time will come is extremely hard to predict. Everything oil-related has to be taken down from the rig and be replaced by sea launch equipment capable of supporting starships and super heavy boosters. Multiple launches per day are supposed to be done here. Fuel farm, maintenance, crew accommodation, flame diverters, deluge system, launch tower capable of catching a booster, we're talking at least a year of construction time. Lots of work is ahead for SpaceX and all of this while developing the prototypes in Boca Chica, while building Starlink, launching astronauts to the ISS, working on Artemis with NASA. The future is bright for SpaceX. One thing is for sure though, I will make very sure to keep you up to date and we're already working on some eye candy for you, so stay tuned. Ever thought about entering the launch industry, become a part of what you love most? Check out Brilliant, a website and app that makes learning interactive, accessible and fun. Their approach is based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that get you to think. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. No tests, no grades, just pick up a course based on what you'd like to learn and get started. Made a mistake? No big deal, just check out the detailed explanation. There's something for everybody, whether you want to brush up on basics of cryptocurrency, quantum computing or statistics. How likely was a year like 2020 to actually happen? To learn things the brilliant way and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up to try out over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 people to join through the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Learn new things the brilliant way. Links in the description. Today's Patreon and YouTube member shoutout goes to Lucian, Mihai Purici, Bob Brink, Aaron Halfeld, and many others. You rock. Thank you for making the difference and for supporting the channel. You have the gratitude of the whole team. Do not forget to join us on our Discord server. See you there. Today's team shoutout goes to the whole team again. It's a bit like SpaceX. There are construction sites all over the place with separate teams working on different tasks at the same time. All of it driven by the spirit of the community and I can call myself lucky to be able to be a part of the Y family. Thank you so much to every single one of you for doing this. You rock. Startups will be founded in the... Cookie? No, you're not allowed to do that. Be, be a nice cat. Starship serial number 9 testing live at Boca Chica, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> if you want to practice how to start up a practical, a practical joke. <laughs> Cookie. Stay away. Kusha, 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 kusha. How up? I am besieged by cats. How am I supposed to do this? Undisclosed buyer in all, in all.